Parrots are the third most popular pet in the world, but the number one most rehomed. Help us put an end to this. Listen to the Parrot Training Podcast, brought to you by Bird Tricks. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Parrot Training Podcast. I'm your host, Dave Womack. I'm your co-host, Jamie Womack. And we are from Bird Tricks. Now, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about something that we don't usually cover, and that is what is required in our free flight course. We've had a lot of questions about this, and so we thought today we would, rather than go super hardcore into something deep, um, we talk a little bit about what that course looks like and sort of why we put it together the way we did and and what all's involved. But I feel like people always have questions about it. They still don't really understand how it works, what it is, what it entails, and what they get out of it. I think most people just see our videos on YouTube and see the end result, but they don't really get to see a lot of the hard work put into it. And yeah. so they're just kind of like, how do you teach this course? And obviously when you only see the end result, that's us with our students having our first probably week of flying outside, including that first day, which we put a lot of emphasis on because that's the most exciting. That's the most emotional for our students. And so that's kind of what we feature. But when you only see that end result, you're kind of wondering, how did they even get there? Especially when everybody's journeys are completely different. I mean, their end result is the same for the most part. Yeah, and if you're starting with an older bird, like with Katie and Mia, the, her bird was older and had to learn, and so the struggles and the frustrations and entire the entire training process was completely different than if we started with like Boomer and Ricochet, those two birds were babies. And even as babies, a Gala and a Red Front and Macaw were totally different journeys. Um, and, and so we want to approach all of those a little bit differently and kind of share with you, you know, first of all, who are the candidates for a free flight course? Um, we've started the free flight course with people who have clipped birds who are young and with a young clipped bird that's wanting to show signs of trying to fledge, even though it's clipped, we can work with those birds and those people and help get those skills developed. So when those feathers do come in around that one year mark, that bird will be flying. Um, you know, and then on the other side of that, if somebody's macaw is is 10 years old, but showing signs of wanting to fly, but can't fly well, like with Katie's case, um, we can also work with that. One of the questions we get is, okay, what does the course look like? How do we do this? Now we've had clients all over the world. And so what we do is we start it by doing weekly video consultations. And what that entails is a 30 to 60 minute Skype, Zoom, FaceTime, whatever works for you guys. Somebody didn't mute their phone. I really thought I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> so <laughs> we do a 30 to 60 minute video conference call once a week. And that's kind of like our guarantee, right? We want to at least make sure that you're touching base with us once a week. We try to set it up for an exact time. Our schedule is flexible for you. So if you want it to be Tuesdays at two, that's what we try to stick to weekly. And it doesn't matter where you are in the world. We'll, we'll work with your time zone. Then an additional thing that we've been doing, and like I did with Luke in Australia, is we set up a shared folder on our iPhones. So every training session he had, he would just upload the video to that folder. I would immediately see it on my end, and I could, at my leisure, go through and just type in, oh, that looked great, you could do this, fix this, change that. Or I could send a video message back telling him, oh man, these are all the things you screwed up on this week. Let's fix these little details. But these things here worked well. Yeah, and we love being in constant contact with our students. So one of the things that I usually say up front when they first enroll is please annoy me with contacting us so much. I would rather have so many messages to go through from you than have to follow up and be like, hey, how's it going? Everything okay? You know, we've had students where they just wait until there's a problem to tell us about something. And that's not the way we wanna go. We wanna keep in constant contact with you so that it's smooth sailing. So we don't bump into those walls. So we see everything as it's coming and we can help you avoid running into those problems. Whereas if you're just contacting us every time there's a problem, then it's just slowing down the overall pace of things and it's not really utilizing us to the best of our abilities with you. Yeah, and the students that have been in constant contact with us usually go through the course really, really fast. Now, the average course time is three to four months is what your purchase buys you. Additionally, after that, we'll charge extra per month, but that's kind of a different way of, uh, a different process as well. Um, but that three to four months can be chopped down to two months depending on the student, the bird, and how much they keep in contact. When it comes to pricing, a lot of people ask us about, you know, why are we so expensive? And if you really break down the amount of time that we spend with you, 
<laughs> we're getting pennies on the dollar um, because it is a very long process. With that being said, we're also the most expensive in this industry because we have the cleanest track record. All of our students have been 100% successful with this with zero, to this point, zero overnighters. Um, and so it's really important that we, and, and no fly offs, I should be clear about that. <laughs> yeah, um, we haven't lost any birds. <laughs> yeah, so it's really important to us that we, you're, you're buying a mutual commitment level. So at the price we have, which has been changing a little bit, but at its current price, you're showing us a large commitment level. And because of that, we will also share the same commitment level with you. The other reason that we want this course to be three to four months is we found that that's kind of the average time that people need to be able to complete it with a, <clears throat> a normal job or whatever their other commitments are. They can also squeeze in and fit training in. Now, the reason that we also keep it to that amount of time and then charge extra for going after is because if we said, oh, you have six months or oh, you have us for however long it takes, people will just drag their feet. And we wanna get this done. We want all the training not to be for nothing. So the faster that we can complete it, the more fresh everything is for the bird and the more you can, like the quicker you can get out there and enjoy it. So that is why we want people to want to complete this quickly so that we can get on to flying. <laughs> The other cool thing about our free flight course is we usually charge $650 per day for an in-home consult, but with included in the price of our free flight course, you get three days of that included. The only difference is you just pay the expenses, which you would anyway if we did an in-home consult. So it wipes out nearly $1,800 to $2,000 of your upfront costs, it's just included. Now most of our clients have needed about halfway, they hit a roadblock, we can't figure it out via video, and so I get on the plane, I get in the car, whatever we need to do, I get out there and I do one-on-one -on -one for multiple days and we just nail it and figure out what those issues are and get you past that so that the follow-up consults through video, phone, text, whatever works, those are... I have a, a very clear reference point of where your bird is and what you need to do specifically to move forward. And not everybody has needed the in-home consult, but early on, I think we had one student that's popping to my mind. Have we had more than, than just uh, Tika that did not require an in-home? Um, the Miller Gold. Oh, she didn't. She You're didn't right. One. Soya. Soya. So okay, so have, Soya, there's been a very few. Yeah, Soya and Tika did not like need uh, in-home consults. And so those were ones where they didn't take us up on that, but everybody else has. So it is up to you and us to kind of see, is this required, is this needed, or is it something that we can work out otherwise? So it's not something that is mandatory, but it is something that we offer that I think really is very beneficial to everybody. It, it exponentially speeds up the flight process, which yes. is, if that's what you want, you want to get outside fast. The other cool thing is that we incorporate this around our free flight trips. So when, when you're finished with the indoor training, your very first flights will be with us outdoors at what we refer to as a level one course. So you will be out in the wide, flat open space, zero to five miles an hour wind, but we have a lot of tools at our uh, discretion to be able to use, like GPS and a few other things where there's a little bit of a safety buffer for us to push within our experience levels to help get your bird there faster. Um, and there's, we're, that's a total case by case basis. Doesn't mean we're going to push your bird, but if we see that your bird's wanting to do things, we're gonna push a little bit harder so that you get the maximum results during the time that we have so that the rest of your flight experiences can be so much more fun, a lot safer, and just overall make it so that we can not have to worry about where your training process is anymore. And I would say some examples of that, if you want to check the YouTube channel, would be Soya. She mm -hmm. blew us away. She had some of the strongest first days outside flying, and we just thought, oh, this girl's ready. I remember when we told Alex, we're like, you're going to do the level four hike, and she was floored. Right. Um, and it was amazing because Soya was actually missing, <laughs> I think, up to three or more primaries on either side. So it was almost like, you know, that toothless grin. She right. was missing <laughs> teeth, so to speak, in her wing. There were just these holes and she was the best, one of the best flyers that was a new flyer. She was the best new flyer. And poor Kim, trip. poor Kim recently in Pahrump, we went out near Vegas and we flew a really flat area with Ricochet for his first flights. And then we went to this like pretty epic canyon. And oh, she, yeah. <laughs> Kim's like, no, no, we can't she do thought, this. She thought we were there for our birds. <laughs> and we're like, all right, are you ready? And she's like, what? Oh, 
Uh, yeah, it so was it's, great. it's definitely a case by case basis, which is why I think that there's a lot of holes in people's understanding about the course is because every journey looks a little bit different. We mm -hmm. talk about each journey differently. The people are different. The birds are different. Their lifestyles, where they live, everything. Um, but we do have our favorite flight locations, which is what we offer. And we offer, you know, our experience for it. So taking people out to certain places, you know, Soya, I think was one of those who did not have a level one in her area. And I know I just talked about the birds instead of the human names. Right. But, um, <laughs> But you know, there's a lot of people will, where where they live, they don't have a level one, so they need to travel to a proper one to be able to get the most out of that flight trip and start off correctly. Yeah, a lot of potential clients in Australia were like, oh, you guys are so lucky in the States because you have these level ones and that we don't have. And I spent a lot of time driving around Australia we and there's found a them. lot of level ones. <laughs> I think the difference is that it looks like these level ones are really close to us. And what people fail to realize is that sometimes we drive three days straight to get to those locations. Yeah. Um, people who only have one or two birds just fly there and beat us. But uh, I forgot to tell you. So we were, I was recently having a consult with somebody who was talking about doing our flight course. And I asked them how far they were from Vegas. And they were like, oh, we're, we're pretty far. And I was like, okay, well, we drive 17 hours. How far do you drive? And they're like, I think they said eight. And I was like, you're not far at all. That's <laughs> awesome. We'll and see you tonight. <laughs> so yeah, so they were cracking up about my mentality of how far was actually far. So um, just so you guys have an idea, like when we go and we do these, you know, we go to Pahrump, I think that was 19 hours. Because uh, it was a couple hours past yeah, Vegas. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, Vegas is usually 17 hours. Moab is... 16. Yeah, so they're all, you know, 17 is pretty it depends, normal. Depends, although we hit some pretty we've hit some pretty bad weather on a lot of these, so it takes Sometimes a little longer. It take longer. But anyways, so just so you guys have an idea that we're not just going into our backyard to fly at a lot of these locations that you're seeing. We're discovering them whether it's on tour, which is where we've discovered a lot yeah. of flight locations, or we are planning it, mapping it out, actually taking some people's suggestions when they suggest locations. We'll look them up and see if they actually seem legit. We'll take balloon rides right. and see, get an aerial view. Which is which is funny because I've done two different locations now, and actually Vegas and Pahrump, we found the best locations from riding in hot air balloons. And on the drive there is when we saw the dunes. Do you remember off yeah. in the distance, I was like, hey, I wonder if we could get to those. Let's go check it out again. And we've had some fails too. We don't videotape them because they're <laughs> just us totally disappointed. Or it's us driving forever trying to figure out, can we fly here? Can we fly here? So you're not having to go through all that with us most of the time. We will be able to uh, have these locations pre-scouted for you. Or sometimes if you want to be long for the adventure, like yeah. Kim going up in a hot air balloon, then hey, join us and, and we'll go on these crazy adventures to find these new locations. Which is part of our course at the very end, you're invited to all future trips. So we actually have a private group where we post to all of our free flight students and we say, hey, here's our plans. Do you, if you wanna join, join. If you don't, don't. But it's open and it's kind of an open-ended invitation. And sometimes it is like what Dave's saying, where we go to a location specifically to scout and we are like, this could be a complete fail or we could have a lot of success. Do you wanna join us? And some people are up for the adventure and and others, Claudia, are not. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love you, Claudia. There's no Starbucks. She's not in. <laughs> so, which there's not in a lot of locations we go. Um, okay, so next thing on the agenda is who do you work with when we're doing the free flight course? Do you work with me? Do you work with Jamie? And the answer is yes. You work with either one of us or both of us. And the beauty about how this course works is we kind of find this natural rhythm and natural uh, connection with one of us versus the other. And so, and that might switch depending on if you're not listening to me, Jamie steps in. Um, <laughs> Don't or... make me sound like that. <laughs> Everybody starts with Dave, and, okay? <laughs> and then if you're still not listening to Jamie, I come back. Except for Alex. I think Alex started with Alex, me. Alex pretty much stayed with you Alex the whole time. Alex is mine. Yeah. Uh, who is Soya? <laughs> right. Alex is Soya. This is going to be really confusing. I know. People are like, what are you talking so about? So you get to work with both of us or one of us, and it depends too. You know, we might be a spot where it's like, hey, she's stuck, she needs you or or whatever. And so then we'll switch trainers for a week or two and get you past that point. Just because we both teach slightly differently, you might learn a little bit different based on how we teach it and we get you on that track. We're totally committed to your success and being able to get your bird outside safely. So the big thing is that your first outdoor flight is with us, with our tools, with our team, and we're there for everything to be able to help you. If you had to go recover, we would be there to help for that. We have radios, we have GPS, we have, have the locations. Boots. Yeah, we have water. We have a kid who likes to hike with us too, so. Yeah. 
So the other part that I wanted to mention is that it's not just about whether or not your bird is ready for free flight or a good candidate. It's also about whether you as people are compatible with us as people and if you even want us as your trainers. So we always uh, require an, ad an initial, an initial consultation. Oh Lord, that was hard to say. Well, and, and just to give you a, a case on this, if you followed Luke's story, he said, all right, guys, I got the money. I'm gonna send it to you, we're doing the course. And we're like, whoa, 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 no. hold on. Let's let's have a conversation. I think we were on a flight trip when it happened. And so I'm- We were, one of our customer service was like, hey, we got somebody ready to do the flight course. They're ready to pay, where do they send it? And I was like, no, 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 no. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm, I think it was in Moab. And so I'm on the phone and, and Luke goes through everything. I'm like, all right, your bird sounds the right spot. You sound at the right spot. And then right before we hang up, he's like, oh, one more thing. I'm in a wheelchair. And I was like, oh, <laughs> how are we gonna hike to a level four? <clears throat> and so it changed the entire dynamic. And so for that, it was like, well, let me think about how we can find, and this was really the key, is I wanted to find his unique advantage and we found it. And that's why one of the reasons that Luke was able to have such huge success is because being in a wheelchair actually offered him an advantage that regular mobile people don't get and so it was really cool it was really cool and I have to say you were excited from the get-go on that and I was incredibly intimidated oh yeah I remember it's... we had opposite reactions I was scared to death and you were pumped <laughs> yeah so we like the challenge you know so if you have a situation where you're like oh I got a challenge you know it doesn't mean that we're gonna be guaranteed to take you but I really thrive on those challenges and those unique situations. And, and if you didn't see the video, go check out the video with Luke in Australia because it was hysterical. We had a blast and, um, and, the other, and just the, the journey for him was The other unique. side of that is that we want to make sure that your idea of free flight for your bird is in alignment with what we offer and what we teach for. So we've had to turn down people who, you know, want more of a city lifestyle where their bird flies alongside them while they, you know, ride some sort of transportation thing to give people lifts to places. And it was just, that's something that we, we don't cater to our free flight uh, motto is really about going to the safest locations so that our risk management is really low. We know that free flight is a risk and we want to take as few risks as humanly possible for the safety of the birds because it's all about quality of life and if they're not alive, <laughs> it kind of defeats the purpose. It's funny because I was just going through our old YouTube channel before we switched it over to the Bird Tricks <laughs> channel. It was on my private account and and. The, like 11 years ago, people hated us for free flying. They were like, you're irresponsible. You they, obviously don't love your birds. Yeah, and it was like, oh, wow, okay. And now, the most recent comment I've seen like that was one, and it was one year ago. And it was like, okay, dude, get with the times. Like, <laughs> these birds are capable of coming back. And yeah, they don't make it on their own. That's why you freaking train them, mm -hmm. all right? And that's what our job is with you, is to help train you through how to do that so that you do it safely. But our whole approach has always been, and if you're new to following bird tricks, you may or may not know that our background is as professional illusionists. So we tour the world with our magic and illusion show, and the birds have been a huge part of our traveling. And so uh, for me, if we're on tour and we want to go free fly, that bird has to come back because it's in the show the next night. There's no, there's no way I'm going to take a risk knowing that I might lose my bird or I might have my bird be someplace overnight because not only is it our family, but he's the star of the show. So we need to make sure that, that, that I guess that background is clear. It's not about um, our style isn't letting the birds out loose all day. Um, our, our style isn't, like Jamie said, urban flying where you're flying or driving down the street on your bike or your motorcycle or whatever you may or have. busy parks or, you know, anything like that with with a lot of risks. We don't, you know, mm -hmm. normally fly at dog parks that are specifically for dogs. We don't fly. <laughs> Unless you rent out the dog park and you send everybody home. We oh, have there done you that. Go. Yeah, we have done that. <laughs> That's legitimate. Yeah, we've done that. So we I'm just find saying... a good spot. So Claudia rented the place <laughs> and so we had the whole place to ourselves. It was awesome. Which was awesome. But I'm just saying like, we're very mindful of where we fly. So we're not looking for a bunch of different obstacles and a bunch of different risks. We don't want to go to a place where they're doing a bunch of things that, you know, could endanger the birds. We want to pick really thoughtfully and mindfully. Yeah. And so jumping back to kind of our style, we call freestyle flying. And it's very based on a hundred percent recall where your bird can go have fun and it doesn't have to come back immediately, but you do need it to come back when you call it. So that could be later in the day at some point. Uh, and you can extend how long you want the bird to be outside. Cause you'll see video of us flying all day. 
Um, we might take a break at lunch, but it's very much based on, hey, we need to be someplace tomorrow. That bird has to come back versus other styles may lend themselves to be like, well, you know where home is if you just want to come back tomorrow and that's not our Or approach. that an overnight is normal. We've heard free flight groups talk about overnights yeah. being very common and normal and that's or not for us. We've, or fly -offs. We haven't had them. Yeah. So, you know, for us, it's, it's really, we want to maintain the safety of the bird, but we also want to maintain a certain amount of freedom for our birds too. So you might see us fly a little bit differently if it's at my parents' house or if it's here in our front yard. You might see the birds playing on top of the aviaries or playing on top, like in the trees and hanging, but you'll see when we call them, they do come. And so it's not like they are super restricted to certain things. That's the whole freestyle part of our flight. Flying, is that they're free to go about and do fun flights and do what they want to do and dive down the canyons but as Dave said in the end they do come back to us that's the whole point of keeping them safe and making this a quality of life sort of thing for the birds so we just want to make sure that our concept of freestyle flying and free flight training aligns with yours so maybe we're the trainers for you and maybe we're not maybe you have a completely different concept or idea of what you want to accomplish with free flight with your birds so that's what that initial consultation is it's like hey do you want to work with us <laughs> <laughs> we're not that fun <laughs> yeah we're not that great <laughs> uh, and do we want to work with you you know are we compatible human beings because that's that's a big deal you know yeah Last but not I'm least. Not that compatible. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Much of anyone. I didn't mean to agree with you. Just kidding. Yeah, you were really quick on that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's so not. <laughs> I think lastly, my final point on free flight and kind of our course is that free flight is for every bird, right? Every bird should have that ability, but it doesn't mean that it's for every person. Um, if it doesn't fit in your lifestyle, I'm not here to shame you into it. I'm not here to push you into it. If you are not interested, if you're not capable, if you um, aren't in the position now but might be later, whatever it is, we're not, we're not out there to tell you you're a bad bird owner if you don't do it. Uh, we believe that each bird should eventually be able to if they can, but we firmly understand that it just doesn't work for every person. Yeah, and so there's no shame in that. Yeah, <laughs> and, and there's a lot of great birds with great lives that don't get to go free fly, and that's, that's totally fine. It's not, it's not for every person, but it is for every bird that can be with that person that helps make it happen. That isn't blind or broken wing or... I thought you were talking about the people. Oh! I was like, that sounds like a fun challenge. <laughs> Email info at birdtricks.com. Oh my gosh. Of course you would, yeah. No, see my communication, all off. How many people understood me as Dave did? Like interpreted that that way versus the bird? Cause I, was, I didn't I say like missing a wing? Well, you started with blind. Uh oh, all right. I want to know how many of you related to interpreting me, how Dave interpreted me versus got me for me. Mm. Maybe I don't want to see that comment that came out of my mouth. I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> just lie. <laughs> say you understand me. All right, well, if you guys are interested in seeing more of our free flight, you can go to youtube.com slash bird tricks. We have all sorts of playlists there where you can see phenomenal locations, incredible skill sets. If you haven't watched our Freedom of Flight, uh, I, I was going to say DVD, but it's, it's a documentary uh, download at this point, uh, check it out. It's really cool. You get to see kind of in depth of different people's journeys in different ways and in different locations and some phenomenal stuff. And this is um, we're approaching almost 10 years on that video now, mm -hmm. but it's, it's exciting. It's really neat to kind of look back and see uh, what it was like 10 years ago. And, and then you can look on our channel and see more of what it looks like now, because it's, it's dynamically changing and, and the community is growing and it, it's just a ton of fun to get yeah. together with people and just do what birds are meant to do and let them fly. And make a lot of adventures along the way. And I would love to hear which free flight student of ours you relate to the most, like whose journey mm. really spoke to you, whose <clears throat> is more similar to where you're coming from. I would love to know that. Because yeah. it would just be really interesting to me to hear what people relate to the most. All right, well, if you've enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, leave your comments. And like we've said many of the podcasts before, if you get value from any of this, uh, whether it's this episode or previous episode, our job is to save birds one person at a time, and we can only do that through you. So please share this video, share this audio, so we can make a bigger impact in the world.